Aren't Arabs terrified? Aren't Iraqis terrified? War is an easy thing to talk about. There are not many people uh, of the generation that remember it. Every morning I saw Dockland burning, 500 people were killed in Westminster one night by a landmine. It was terrifying. Aren't Arabs terrified? Aren't Iraqis terrified? Don't Arab and Iraqi women weep when their children die? Doesn't bombing strengthen their determination? What fools we are to live in a generation for which war is a computer game for our children and just an interesting little channel for news item. Every member of parliament tonight who votes for the government motion will be consciously and deliberately accepting the responsibility for the deaths of innocent people if the war begins as I fear it will. Now that's for their decision to take. But this is a quite unique debate in my parliamentary experience where we ask to share responsibility for a decision we won't really be taking with consequences for people who have no part to play in the brutality of the regime which we are dealing with. And I finish with this. On October the 24th, 1945, and the former Prime Minister from Bexley, old Sidcup will remember it, the uh, United Nations Charter was passed. And the words of that charter e etched into my mind and moved me, even as I think of them. We, the people of the United Nations, determined to save future uh, generations, succeeding generations, from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has caused untold suffering to mankind. That was the pledge of that generation to this generation, and it would be the greatest betrayal of all if we voted to abandon the Charter and take unilateral action and pretend we were doing it in the name of the international community. And I shall vote against the motion for the reasons that I've given the House.